welcome back to the Sierra Science Show channel and welcome to a new video. So today I am coming out you with five of my most underrated books. So in order to make this video a little bit more of a challenge for me and to also avoid recommending a book that's actually really popular and I'm just late to the game, I decided to set a few guidelines for myself when thinking about unpopular books. I said that the book had to have at least or under 5,000 Goodreads ratings and it had to have been out for at least a year and obviously I had to have read it before. Like I said, I've got five books to talk about for you guys and um, I really, really hope that somebody would find this video helpful and find their new favorite book or at least a good book out of it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first book that we're going to be talking about that I think is severely underrated and needs to be shown more love is Underwater. I read this book May 18th of 2017 and the synopsis reads as follows. Morgan didn't mean to do anything wrong that day. Actually, she meant to do something right. But her kind act inadvertently played a role in a deadly tragedy. In order to move on, Morgan must learn to forgive. First, someone who did something that might be unforgivable, and then herself. But Morgan can't move on. She can't move on beyond the front door of, her, of the apartment she shares with her mother and little brother. Morgan feels like she's underwater, unable to surface, unable to see her friends, unable to go to school. When Morgan can't hold her breath any longer, a new boy moves in next door. Ever reminds her of the salty ocean air and the rush she used to get from swimming. He might be just what she needs to help her reconnect with the world outside. Alright, so when I read this book, I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I thought it was a really important book. The trigger warning for this book is that it does happen to deal with the topic of school shootings. So if that is a trigger for you, I do not recommend this book. You might want to steer clear from it. But if you want to learn about the implications of how somebody that firsthand witnessed a shooting and inadvertently takes part in the shooting um, deals with it, then this would be a good book to read. Alright, the next book that I want to shine a light on is Take Me to the Cat by Brian A. Loney. So I've actually worked with Brian and Verona booksellers to do a requested review of a couple of his works. So I've worked with them in the past. The review for this book is on my blog. I will leave the link in the description. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars when I read it back in May of 2017, and here's what it's about. Nostalgic high school senior Michael Jackson wants nothing more than to reunite with his friends from elementary school, and possibly change his name. Transferring before middle school after his parents' nasty divorce, Michael always felt he was at his happiest back in his Oklahoma hometown. Inviting his lifelong crush, Katherine, among other former classmates to a spring break reunion party seems like the perfect plan for Michael to get closure on the formative years of his life. Yet nothing is as he remembers when Michael finds himself entangled in his own confusion between reality and nightmare. Suddenly, sequins from his childhood resurfaced and the fanatic ringleader from Michael's past will do whatever it takes to keep his friends silent. Now it's up to Michael to save them all before it's too late. But what does he have? But does he have the courage and strength to go up against his own worst enemy? This is a book that was way out of my reading comfort zone when I accepted this review request from Verona Booksellers. And even though it was something that I probably wouldn't have picked up on my own, I highly enjoyed this book. There's a lot of characters in the book, but they are all very, very well done, very well developed, and everybody seems to have their own motive. And the psychological thriller part of this book is fantastic. I couldn't tell what was reality and what was fake through Michael's point of view and it left me guessing the entire time I was reading. Like I said, a full review of this book is on my blog and I will definitely leave it below, but highly, highly recommend that you guys check out this book and all of Brian Loney's books. I love working with him and Verona booksellers and I really hope to do so again in the future. Alright, for the third book that we're talking about that I think is severely underrated, it is Suffer Love by Ashley Herring Blake. Look, I have a physical book for once. <laughs> So I read Suffer Love back in November of 2016, so it's been a very long time since I've read this book, but when I read it, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Just let it go. That's what everyone keeps telling Hadley St. Clair after she learns that her father cheated on her mother. But Hadley doesn't want to let it go. She wants to be angry and she wants everybody in her life, her dad most of all, to leave her alone. Sam Bennett and his family have had their share of drama too. Still reeling from a move to a new town and his parents' recent divorce, Sam is hoping that he can coast through senior year and then move on to hassle-free, parent-free life in college. He isn't looking for a relationship, that is, until he sees Hadley for the first time. Hadley and Sam's connection is undeniable, but Sam has a secret that could ruin everything. Should he follow his heart or tell the truth? So reading back my review on Goodreads all the way back from 2016, this book apparently had made me cry. This book to me means something because it's kind of hits home for me and like I've said this before, I don't want to like spill my whole personal life, but I just relate it to the characters in this book and their situation. So if you're looking for a book that deals with complicated family dynamics and complicated emotional situations, I definitely recommend checking out Suffer Love. 
The fourth book that I want to mention is Summer of Supernovas by Darcy Woods. I read this book back in June of 2016, so another really long time since I've read it, but this is a book that I have reread multiple times, and usually when I reread a book, it means that it is really good. I gave this book a four out of five stars when I read it, and honestly, I will probably reread this book at least a couple more times. I just love it so much. Here's the synopsis. As a daughter of an expert astrologer, Wilhelmina Carcile knows that truth lies within the stars. So when she discovers a planetary alignment that won't repeat for a decade, she's forced to tackle her greatest astrological fear, the fifth house, relationships and love. Will must decide whether to trust her heart or her chart when she falls for a sensitive guitar player whose zodiac sign points to cosmic disaster. If Will's fate is truly written in the stars, then this summer is about to go supernova. The people in real life that know me know that I am an absolute astrological, like, zodiac sign fanatic. I love those things. I'm a Cancer, by the way. If anybody else is, hit me up, Cancer Squad. I do want to revisit this book, though, and actually give it an updated review, because I think that some of the things that I said in my old review probably I feel different about now. I know for a fact that I complained that there was too much wordiness in this book, but now, as a word nerd, I absolutely love learning new vocabulary so I would probably re-rate this book and give it five stars honestly the next time I read it. Such a good book, highly recommend. And the last book that I want to give the biggest spotlight to is Catcher by Kayla Nicholson. Now I am biased, Kayla Nicholson is a YouTuber and I have been watching her content for about three years now. So if I've been watching her for that long, you guys can probably guess that I'm a big fan of her and anything she does. Catcher is her first book ever released and she is currently in the process of writing the sequel to Catcher known as Catching. When a boy with gray eyes tells you it's not your time to die, do you listen? Ever since the day her baby brother, Axel, died, Carson has been dreaming of the same boy, the one who told her it wasn't her time to go when her family's lift crashed through a bridge railing and sank to the bottom of a river, shattering her life forever. Trapped by the new divide between her and her parents, and by their drastic measures to shelter the only child they have left, Carson escapes into her dreams every night, floating among the clouds with the gray-eyed boy who saved her. Until her 18th birthday, when fate sends her family home up in flames, leaving her waking world flipped upside down. Suddenly, Carson finds herself on the other side of the country in the big city of Tarragon, alone for the first time in her life, and dropped into the only waking dream she's ever had, to attend Yorker Specialty School. But sinister forces are at work beneath the surface of her world, and as the gray-eyed boy slips away from her dreams, only to be replaced by nightmares of flames, Carson finds herself engulfed in a world of deadly secrets and haunting shadows. Ones that make her the key player in the ultimate game of fates. So like I said, I'm very biased. I love Kayla Nicholson and a lot of this book is laced with her personality and it's kind of like a tip to her fans that know her and know her quirks. It's like, hey, there's a lot of me in my main character, Carson. And for some people, they really don't like that. They really would rather the character just be their own person rather than the YouTuber as a fictional character. And I understand that. This book might not be for everybody and people might have their opinions on YouTubers that become authors, but personally, I really liked it. I'm not gonna lie, there are some grammar and syntax errors throughout the book, and a lot of the Goodreads reviews that are critical have noted this, but Kaylin has also taken note to this and has said that she will work on this for Catcher number two. The writing is littered with futuristic and really cool, like, inventions that will happen in the future, such as portals and lifts and things of that nature, so if you're looking for a sci-fi or futuristic book, here it is. There's also a big theme of dreams and the significance of dreams, so if that's something that you're looking for too, here's another thing that you should read the book for. So there you have it. Those are five books that I think are severely underrated and need some more love here in the booktube community. Let me know if any of these books sound interesting to you, if you think you will like them or pick them up, and besides that, I will see you guys on this channel next Sunday. Bye everybody!